Welcome to Fresh Off the Set. I'm Carrie Hawker Diaz. And I'm Brooke, and we've never done this together. Wait, you know what? I just locked eyes with you, and I'm like, this is the first time we've done a podcast together. This is it. Oh my goodness. Oh my well, gosh. You, I have a lot to learn from you because, as, as you know, you were in radio for how long? I was on radio for about six years, but uh, Carrie, do, you have nothing to learn. You're, 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 you've got this. You've <laughs> no, got this no, on no. Lock. No, you're such a pro with all of this. Your radio years were awesome. Do you miss it at all? Oh, absolutely. There was something about it that was just so much fun. It's just so different. And what what I always liked about radio is because it is just you talking and you can be very much be yourself. So if somebody doesn't like you and they listen to you on the radio, they genuinely don't like you. Like they, cause they're really just absorbing your personality. Cause you are you. There's no, there's nothing that's like they can get caught up on. It's, they just don't like you. And that's fine. You well, can totally accept that. Well, the hours are tough. Like what time were you waking up in the morning? I usually woke up around like 5 a.m. right there. Like, and then when we started broadcasting out uh, back east, we started waking up earlier, like 4.30 and things like that. Yeah. That's why I have so much respect for our next guest that's going to be on here, Jessica Ferguson. And I've got to just gush about Jess for a second. She's because awesome. I worked with with her for six years. We weren't on the same show, but we were in the same building. We were in the same iHeartMedia cluster. And she is exactly who she is on air in person. And if you listen to 90, if you listen to ZHT, you know how sweet and kind she is on air. Mm -hmm. She is that in person. She, I, I was a brand new broadcaster. I mean, brand new. iHeart was my first ever real job. And in a time where people could have just pushed me away and just not been very nice because who was I? Literally, I wandered in off the street. Like I could have just been anybody. There weren't a lot of women in radio. And there weren't a lot of women in radio at that time. She just bear hugged me and was so kind and like was always there to listen and to help and to be a mentor. And she's just a wonderful, wonderful person. You can feel that too. You absolutely can feel that because the, for the interview, it's the first time I'd met her in person. We just kind of know each other through social media and mm -hmm. we, you know, support each other's pictures and say, hi, you know, and you're so cute and this and that. But she really is exactly what you just said. The same person you hear on the radio. She's just as genuine, just as kind, but you get the hugs in real life. Yes. And she's a hard worker. Like you were saying that schedule, she's been doing that for years. She's been waking up. She's been hosting her, the show. She and, and she has all these other things that she does in her life. She's a, a business. She runs her business. She does all of these things. And she does it with a smile on her face. And she, I've never say, heard her say an unkind thing about anybody. Yeah, I could see that. And you know this business. This business can be pretty brutal. It's and tough. There, a lot of times we're all fighting for the same spot. Mm -hmm. But you never feel that way with Jess. She's just so kind. And I always like to say that radio is like the island of misfit toys where everybody <laughs> kind of has their own story, but we all come together. Yeah. And, and it's the truth, but it is just the weirdest, funnest place that you could ever work. And she is just a gem of a human being. And I'm so excited for, to honestly, for me, I want to, I can't wait to listen to this well, episode myself because I'm going to get to know her on a different level. She loves you. When we came in here and recorded this, she was so sad that she had missed you. She just loves you. I mean, you and Jessica really paved the way for women in radio. That's you know, so there wasn't, you it wasn't a thing, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it was great to get to know her. Uh, more on a personal level, and um, I wish you were here when you recorded when we recorded it. But you can hear it now. Well, I'm gonna listen to it right now. So, okay. what do you say? Shall we, everybody? Let's, let's check it out. Hi, I'm Carrie Hawker Diaz, and thank you for listening today. We have such an exciting interview for you. It's Jessica Ferguson. You know the voice from 97.1 ZHT. Jessica in the house. We're so excited to have you. Yay, thank you. Okay, I'm, I yeah, feel I'm like so honored. you need to tell us how to do this, because uh -oh. you've been doing radio for how long now? Uh, let's see. I've been in radio over 20 years, which is so crazy to say, because I'm still 20 years old. That's right. And, <laughs> and you been, look 20, it's fine. Because uh, <laughs> we go to Utah Facial Plastics. <laughs> That's right. We're just talking about that. And I've been with Z. CHT over 16 years. 16 years. Yeah. How did you get into the business? How do you get into radio, Jessica? Oh, that's a good question. So I majored in broadcasting at Arizona State back in the day. Okay. Had internships, worked for free forever, you know, made coffee, made copies, <laughs> got to practice at the college radio station at ASU. I mean, yeah. you just do what you can do to get your foot in the door. It's, it's not easy, but if you love it, anything that you love, you're willing to do it, right? Ooh, that's good. Anything you love, you're willing to do it for. And that's very true. Were you trying to get into ZHT? Was that something or did it just kind of happen? That's a good question too. Okay, so I am an Arizona girl. And after college, um, my boyfriend and I, and now he's my husband. So he was also a radio guy. We met in a broadcasting class in school. 
And he got an opportunity to move to Salt Lake when we were engaged. And so he was like, what do you think? And I thought, Salt Lake City, I'd never been here. And I never thought I'd leave Arizona. Mm-hmm. But I thought, uh, starting out a marriage, telling your soon-to-be spouse that he can't go live his dream is pretty crappy. Uh, so I was like, Ugh. And I worked at a radio network, and I'd been there for about four years. Got a lot of great you know, info and knowledge and just kind of figuring out the business on the back end, on the network side. And I didn't love it. It wasn't my passion, but it was a great way to break in. And I thought, oh, okay, maybe I could have an opportunity in Salt Lake. So I moved here with no job, which was terrifying and not my personality. Okay, so no job. No job. So he had the job. He had an apartment over in Midvale. And so we were kind of long distance during our, you know, engagement, whatever. And he'd fly in for tastings, fittings, all that fun stuff. He'd fly back to Phoenix. So after we got married, I gave my three-week notice to the network and then came here, like I said, with no gig, and I was freaking out. That's a little scary to do. Oh, it's so scary, because I'm such a planner, and just, you know what I mean, by the book with everything. I'm oldest, firstborn. So he worked for what was Clear Channel, and it's now iHeart. Okay. And he was in the sports division, and so he's like, hey, the morning show guys on the music station are hiring a, you know, a person in the morning, and their gal left, and this and that and the other, and I was like, oh. Okay. And I was so nervous, but I was like, I I need to do it. I need to do it. So I did. I tried out Monday. They had me come back Tuesday. Then they had me come back Wednesday. So I was there a full week. What does an audition look like for radio? Do you just go in and are you actually on the show live? Yeah. It's pretty intimidating. It's pretty intimidating, especially with people you don't know in a new place you've never lived. And you're just like, oh my gosh, don't sound like an idiot. Don't mess up. Don't say a cuss word. All of the things. Yeah. All of the things. So after a week of trying out with them and auditioning, they definitely were like, okay, we're feeling it. We're feeling it. You should you should come back. And so that was over 16 years ago. Well, you and Frankie just jam together. Oh. I mean, you really are. And do people, I'm sure out in the open, people know you out in the open. I say out in the wild. <laughs> and I'm I sure people want to talk to you all the time because you seem so, and you are an amazingly kind person. But do people just come up to you like, Jessica? I love it. I love it because I have all these awesome friends. You know, it's neat. I get hugs in public and someone will hear my voice or they'll see my red hair. And it's just <laughs> cool. It's so fun to be immersed in the community and that. We're all just kind of doing this crazy life thing together. But yeah, Frankie is my boy. He's my brother. He's my work husband. I mean, he's just, like the OG, I feel like, of the business, too. Oh, he is. Yeah, he'll be celebrating, what, 25 years with ZHT coming up in the fall. He's been in radio, I think, over well over 30 years. He's amazing. A long time. Yeah. So you're in the mornings. What? When are you on? Like, what time in the mornings? So the show's live 6 to 10. I get in about 445. Ooh. Yeah. Are those, is that tough? Do you ever get used to it, Jessica? Mm, you know what? Honestly, it depends on the day. But usually no. Usually no. <laughs> the alarm goes off at 3.30, and I'm like, oh, it's it's still nighttime. But, you know, thank God for coffee and yeah. getting up and just a little bit of meditation and prayer and like, okay, let's go. Let's take a cold shower. Let's get the, right. get the show on the road. Exactly. Well, I remember talking to Brooke, uh, my co-host, who was previously in radio, and she would say, what – the situation is with early morning radio is it changes your night before yeah. because you're in bed by what time do you go to bed? I go to bed about 10, 10 30, 10, 10 30. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not too to early. No, it used to be 11, 11 30, sometimes midnight. Ooh. So when I was doing the show in my twenties, I could hang thirties. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, it's getting a little rough. <laughs> now I'm in my forties. I'm like, Oh, th- Oh, this ain't going to happen. Like uh-huh. I can't hang. So it's yeah. 10 o'clock, 10 30, but it used to be yeah, a lot later before. And I just, I don't want to miss out on that time with my husband and son. So I stay up so I can hang with them and have quality time. It's you know? so true. Do you love it here in Utah? You say you're an Arizona girl. Do you, I mean, it is a little hot here. Not as hot maybe as Arizona, <laughs> but do you love, what do you love about Utah? Oh, four seasons. Yeah. It's so pretty. It's I, so nice. I do love the snow when the streets are clear. I love the snow, but I just, I love the people. Like if there's somebody who needs something, this, the community mm-hmm. rallies, just everybody is so friendly here. It's clean here. It's great for families here. It's a great economy. I mean, I could go on and on and on. I mean, I thought we'd be here maybe three years and go back to Phoenix. Yeah. And this is home. I mean, this is home. I was in Arizona, what, 27 years, and I've been here for over 16. So, I mean, yeah, I don't foresee us leaving. We love it. Well, we want you to stay. Oh, thanks, <laughs> we definitely Brad. want you to stay. You're so sweet. Is there anything that surprised you when you got into radio? Did you kind of picture it being a certain way? And then once you got into radio, we were like, huh. This is this this surprised me. Yeah. Um it's a lot harder than I thought. There's a lot of work. I think people just think you go in a room with a microphone and you just turn it on and you just talk about whatever, but there's a lot of prep, there's a lot of work. Um yeah, it's evolved 
you know, just with social media and everything we do with email. I mean, there's just constant. You're working all the time. You know this. Mm -hmm. It's not like there's an off switch. You're always on the clock, it seems like. Um, You don't meet as many celebrities as I was hoping and anticipating. <laughs> Dang a, it. a lot of them don't come to Salt Lake. You know, it's getting, we're getting bigger, right? Yeah. But as far as like LA or, you know, Dallas or Phoenix or New York, we don't get the celebs in studio as much as the bigger markets. Okay. I was going to ask you about celebrity interviews too. Is there anyone that you've loved interviewing that have just been so amazing and kind to talk to that you were like, oh, they're cool. They're, they're really cool. cool. There's been a lot. I think on the phone we talked to J-Lo, and she was pregnant with the twins at the time, and I tried to get it out of her, and she would not tell me. And then she went on the late show that night, and she said she was pregnant with twins. Oh, you tried to get Ooh. it. You tried. I tried. I tried to get the scoop. Talked to Lady Gaga when she was brand new to the business, so that was really fun, too. That's cool. That was cool, and she was, it's funny, we got ready to hang up with her and she said to Frankie she's like spin that record babe (laughs) so every time I hear her songs I think of her voice but I think my favorite he's my OG Nick Lachey 98 degrees oh man he was in person it was right after he and Jessica were getting divorced and all that drama and their whole show newlyweds on MTV came out early 2000s or late 2000s something like that yeah it was probably I'm trying to think because I started with the station in 2005 so yeah a couple years after I was there we had these team Lachey shirts that I made for me (laughs) and Frankie and our staff and oh my gosh I was such a goof and I was spraying perfume all over and you know powdering my nose I was like oh I gotta look good it's the boy band thing I know you gotta look good you know he's just such a good Midwestern boy, normal down to earth guy. He's just sweet. He's he's good people. That's good to hear. Yeah. That's really good to hear. There's good people out there. Um, where do you think radio is headed? Do you think it's I mean, we talk about like TV and we talk about podcasts are kind of taking over. Where do you think radio is headed? Oh, that's a good question. So I think with every industry, no matter what it is, whether it's media, just anything. Every industry has the roller coaster, right? The ups and the downs and the ebbs and the flows, and you just got to ride the wave. And I think it's really neat because we're getting ready to go into some really awesome music, which Mm -hmm. we've been needing for a while. And it's cool because we're able to bring in digital. It's we're kind of, we've got this umbrella at iHeart, so we can service everybody's needs just within iHeart. So it's pretty exciting. I feel like, especially coming off the pandemic, we have a lot of fun things in the works. Um, our iHeart Radio Music Festival and just really cool things that we're excited to talk about and that are coming up this year and fun ways to feel normal again. And I love podcasts. I'm a fan of them. There's so many different genres and so many talented people, but us radio peeps have been doing it for a long time. Long time. And we love it. And it's our passion and our craft. And, you know, we have this amazing audience and listeners in this community, this family that we have with us every day. And so you just you just can't beat it. And it's it's hard, I think, for people getting into the business now because you have you're just starting and it takes mm-hmm. time. And we've built that over over the years. You know, you totally have um, that actually leads in my next question. If someone is listening, thinking, you know, what, I would love to get into radio. I think it would be so cool. What advice do you have for somebody looking to kind of follow that path? There is there's a new gal that just started in our building. And she majored in broadcasting, I think it's slick. And she's like, I just want to get in wherever I can. And that really is the way to do it. Wherever you can. Yep. And usually they'll hire like a front desk person or promotion staff to help us with our live broadcasts, behind the scenes stuff, you know, uploading our Frankie and Just podcast or uploading photos online and stuff like that for us, social media, wherever you can get in, get in. Because it's a good time. There's a big transition with every business right now because of the pandemic. So many people have left their jobs or they got laid off or they figured out, you know, this really isn't my jam. I want to do something else. Mm -hmm. So this is a good time, whatever you're passionate about, to get in. This is like prime opportunity. Ooh, listen up. Just get in the door. Yeah. Somehow, however you can. And just don't be too big to do the little things. Even... If you've been in the business for decades, you can't be too big to do the little things Mm -hmm. because that's what it's all about. Right. You know, you got to know what you're doing and and just be willing to do whatever it takes, even if you're a veteran. Even if you're a veteran like Jessica here. (laughs) (laughs) She is. That's some good advice. Okay, um, we talked a little bit about you working a lot, which you do But when you're not working. I know you're a mama. I know you're a wife. What what do you like to do and how do you balance that work home life? Oh, that's good. Time management is huge. Like I would, I'd be dead without time management. I really have gotten better, especially in my 40s with how I spend my time and who I spend my time with because life is super short and Mm -hmm. I have FOMO. I don't like to miss anything. I like (laughs) to have fun. Um, But I do. I like to have time with my husband. I like to have time with our son. 
I have a Bunko group I'm involved with. I love my Mary Kay sisters. I do a lot of Mary Kay oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, I see, I see that on your social, yeah. Mary Kay. You guys look like you have a great bond. We have fun. Those are my sisters. I was wanted to have girls. I was so grateful I could have Cooper um, just because I've had fertility struggles forever. And those are my girls. Those are the girls I prayed for, right? Like if I could have had daughters, like those are my girls. Yeah. They're just awesome women. How long um, have you been doing the Mary Kay thing? Ten years. Wow. I celebrated a decade. Ten yeah. years. It's awesome. Okay. I love it. And that's the thing. I mean, I grew up with a sister. My sister Trina's a few years younger. And I was just always the friend. I always wanted to gather people. Let's go have fun. Let's, you know, like I said, I have FOMO and the more the merrier. And so I had 10 bridesmaids when I got married. Yes. I'm the girlfriend girl. <laughs> yes. I'm your girl. So it's just, I don't know. I, I love to be around women, empower women. I just, I'm a champion for women. And I just, I don't know. I'm a, I'm silly. I'm a, I'm a goofy girl, but I love to bring people into the party. I think that's why you do so well. Cause it, it like you, you hear that in your voice and you are so kind and you're just like a friend, you know, you're a friend. To, to everybody. Um, let's talk more about um, being a mama because it's tough. Yeah. How do you balance that, especially with like, I mean, you were doing radio, I guess, when Coop was how the whole time. Yeah, I was pregnant, waddling down the hall. He was 10 pounds when he was born, 22 Ooh. inches. I was like waddling down the hall. I'm like, my hips are going to separate and break off my body. <laughs> but we're here and we're going to do this. <laughs> right? Um, gosh, you know, honestly, I have to... Thank my husband. He's a work at home dad. So he does real estate. He's done IT. He did radio. That's kind of where he started. But um, he, he's able to have a flexible schedule and be there for Coop because between radio and Mary Kay, I do work a lot. I am gone a lot. Yeah. And they understand that's my passion and what I'm good at. And it's really good for our family. And they're just flexible, easy, low key dudes. So it's and I only have one. You know, we wanted two kids. We did fertility stuff for about 12 years mm -hmm. and finally just, gosh, not too long ago, decided just you know, we're lucky to have Coop yeah. and God is good. God knew that I wanted to be a mom yeah. and I wasn't going to stop. And I'm so grateful because with all my health issues over the years, there's no way Coop should even be here. I mean, he's a true miracle. He really is. Every baby is a miracle and a gift. But I mean, mm -hmm. when I got pregnant with him, my doctor was like, what are you doing? I mean, he freaked out. He's like, he's not going to be full term. He's going to have, you know, issues. He was absolutely perfect and healthy. And I'm just so grateful to God that he gave me Coop. So Oh, I love it. I, I just see that love coming from you in your eyes, Jessica. Our kids are really, I have a five-year-old and uh, she's our only one too. She's and it's, cute. Oh, thank you. Thank she's you. So she's so cute. She's a, she's a handful and I wouldn't want her any other way. <laughs> I'm like, you go girl. Um, but I know you've been so open with uh, your fertility struggles and there are so many families, so many parents struggling with that, listening right now, thinking I, I want to give up. Yeah, you it's know? hard. Do you have advice for anyone going through that? It's hard. I think, honestly, I would have started earlier. I started way too late. I was like, oh, we can do it on our own, right? It was. I was trying to be optimistic, but it was also kind of silly. Yeah. I would have called in RCC, Reproductive Care Center, a lot sooner. Um, so I felt like I was getting a little bit too old, and um, I don't even know. It's just... Don't be ashamed because it affects so many people. Mm -hmm. And I have endometriosis, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and then thyroid stuff. And so all of that is like the perfect storm for a female not I to have, have thyroid stuff children. Too. Oh, yeah, what do you it's got? No, uh, Hashimoto's. Oh, so yeah. I was Graves' disease. Okay. I took out my thyroid, removed my eyeballs. Oh, it's been a fun journey. <laughs> oh, Jessica. Coop, Coop, definitely. I mean, he's, he's, did you have any idea? I mean, I'm sure you're obviously like hoping and praying, but then when you found out you were pregnant. Oh, so excited. That's like the best feeling in the world. So excited. And just to be able to carry him full term. And like I said, he was healthy and they didn't think he would be. And yeah. now he's 14 and a half and he's just awesome. He's just an awesome, gentle giant. He's the coolest kid. And I know everybody says that about their kids, but he really <laughs> has such a huge heart for people and animals and he's responsible. I mean, he's just, he's good people, man. Yeah. He's good people. Well, and probably if you're going through infertility too, I imagine to stick together and find your groups and find your people because True. it's not talked about enough. No. And I think it's getting better for sure. And even Frankie and his wife, Tammy had, you know, fertility struggles and they went through RCC reproductive care center and their son is going to be six at the end of the summer. Oh. And it's sometimes you just need to call in some help. And let, that's what I would say. Don't wait too long. Don't, don't put it off and put it off and put it off. Like really get in there if you're yeah. serious about it, you know, get some help because there's a reason it's not working and it's yeah. okay. I mean, and I even talked to my, my pastor's wife and I was like, is it, is it bad? Am I messing with science? Am I playing God no. to do fertility? And she's like, absolutely not. Like God gave us these tools. Yeah. They're in place to help us. Right. And you know, there's a book we talked about on the air and it's called the body keeps score. 
And it's just years of the way we treat our bodies. And then we get to this position or it's handed down from maybe, a, you know, one of our moms or dads, like the body is so complex and we mm-hmm. need the experts to help us sometimes. And so don't be ashamed of that. Right. That's, that's really good advice, Jessica. Well, your family is just absolutely beautiful. Thank you. So is yours. And I love thank watching you, you guys. It, thanks. Do you it's, want more kiddos or are you one and done? Like what's the scoop? You know, I, it's funny because I'm 41 and I go back and forth every single day. Okay. Every day. And we, you know, we try to figure out, and I don't have a lot of time to be doing that, you know, so it's, so I we'll see you what 33. happens. you Your skin you is on point, so sister. Nice. I'm not joking. I'm like, okay, You're I'm looking at her back skin. anytime. I'm not kidding. I'm like, okay, she's probably 33. <laughs> I was like, she's probably like at least 10, 11 <laughs> no. years younger than myself. I am 41. Oh, I do not gorgeous. have a lot of time, but I, you're so nice. And I, so we'll, we'll kind of see. So is that, it your thyroid stuff? Is yeah. that? Okay. Yeah. It sucks. It sucks. I hate it. It sucks because you don't, you don't ever expect it to happen to you, right? You're right. You're yeah. right. Well, and then, and it's hard to, uh, it's human of us because I'll see people that don't want kids or don't treat their kids good because they didn't want them. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I will take your baby. You know, like if you don't want them, that's okay. Give them to me. Or yeah. why are you getting pregnant? You, you don't know even want to be pregnant. You know that want and that urge. Uh, it's hard. It's really hard. It's hard. Do you see yourself? I mean, I know you said you love Utah. Do you think your family will stay here? Do you think you'll be here for a little bit? Oh yeah, for sure. We definitely have talked about just, you know, years down the road retiring and keeping our house here and maybe getting a house in Phoenix because we do have so much family back home still and our son hey wants yo. to go to, I know, right? <laughs> our son wants to go to Arizona State for school. And then we love Florida. We're beach people. So we're like, okay, if we could just get like little condos, even though they're teeny tiny, yeah. you know, and just explore and have fun. But we do. We've made such a family here with our Mary Kay people and our church friends and our neighbors. Like we just, and even like Frankie and his family, like we're all just so connected. We don't want to leave our people. Well, you're just, you're loved here. You oh, really are. You thanks. are, I feel like you are a Utah. Like, can oh, we say yeah. that? I, feel I, like, I mean, you're an Arizona <laughs> girl, but we want to, we want to call you as our own for Thank sure. Um, Jess, if we want to listen to you and follow you, where can we go? Oh, that'd be awesome. Uh, 97.1 ZHT. So we're live six to 10 each weekday, or we have our Frankie and Jess podcast, super easy on the iHeartRadio app. And you can also catch us on Instagram. Um, I'm Fergie girl 14 on Instagram and then 971 ZHT on Instagram. We're on Facebook. I mean, we are everywhere. Super easy. Yay. You can, you can't miss them. If you look, turn on the radio in the morning, <laughs> you can't miss. I mean, you, you would definitely want to tune in. Okay. We'd like to end the show with what I call the fresh five. I'm just going to throw five questions at you. You can say whatever is off the top of your head. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. Favorite holiday. Valentine's day. Oh, I'm all cute. about the love. <laughs> that is you. I can see that being you. Uh, favorite place to travel. Uh, Hawaii. Ooh, Hawaii. So fun. I've, I have not been there in years, but I've been there three times and it's always been magical. And you want to go back yeah. very soon. What TV show would you love to make a cameo on? Is there a TV show you love to watch and you're thinking, oh, this would be cool if I could have a cameo on this? Oh, man. Whether that's it's like, like a comedy one. or do you, are you, what are you binging right now? Any show? We just finished Righteous Gemstones. I don't know if any <laughs> I don't know if anybody has watched that, but it's, it's, oh my gosh, it's just funny. It's just funny. They kind of make fun of evangelical Christians and I'm a Christian girl, right? So it's like they make fun of the rich Christians in the (laughs) South and just, oh, it's hysterical. And we've been trying to get other people on it and they're just like, oh, it's so twisted, but it's so funny. So maybe a cameo on that? Uh, Probably. He's like the (laughs) non-twisted person. (laughs) No, I'd be twisted. It'd be kind of fun. Because John Goodman's in that. What is it? Adam Devine or Divine from Pitch Perfect. Yep. Yep. He's hysterical. And it's, um... Danny McBride. I mean, they're just funny. Is they're it Netflix? Just funny. Yeah, Netflix. Netflix. Okay, no, wait. no, no. Wait, hold on. There's so many platforms. HBO. HBO. Yeah. Tell me the name of it again. Righteous Gemstones. Righteous Gemstones. Okay. But if you asked me that back in the day, I would be on Beverly Hills 90210. Oh, Hey, <laughs> little Dylan and uh, da 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 da. Oh, you and I, you and I, I we're, we're we are nineties <laughs> girls. Okay, um, we have two more. I think. Who's someone you'd love to have coffee with? Mary Kay. She was awesome. She started her company when she was retired. She was great at sales. She was a single mom back in the day. She was married a few times. She was a strong Christian woman. She was funny and feisty. I would love to sit down with her, but I know I will in heaven. I know I will. It's going to happen. It's it's already on my schedule. It's there. (laughs) It's it's there. Um, And it's brunch. What do you order? Oh, okay. So Sunday's best. I know you've been there too. I love it. We yeah, so we actually good. did our podcast a little bit ago with Michael McHenry. Sunday's best. Love Michael. Love Ryan. Ryan's one of my dear friends. 
um, they have, and they're only seasonal, but they have these pumpkin pecan pancakes. Ooh. They were so good. I went there again just to get them before they were done <laughs> serving them. So they're, like I said, just seasonal. But, I mean, their regular pancakes are fabulous, too. But the pumpkin pecan were to die for. I have to find that. I oh. have to go and get those. Maybe they'll do them special for us because we're Let's their do friends. do that. Michael, listen. So. Just do it year-round. <laughs> listen, listen to us. That's what I told him. <laughs> He's like, no, no. I'm like, please. Pumpkin. All the pumpkin, Michael. Um, well, Jessica, it's been so fun to get to know you. Thank Thanks. you for Thank coming you. in and talking with us today. We really appreciate you. And once again, make sure to listen to the mor- their morning show every morning, Monday through Friday. And uh, thanks for listening to our podcast. To the end, if you want to continue to freshen up your day, you can watch us on Fresh Living every weekday on CBS Channel 2 in Utah at 1 o'clock. You can also watch us on our YouTube channel, KUTV Fresh Living, and follow us on social media. We will see you next week.